morning everybody so today I thought I would do a video about my hacking essentials uh, it's a really sunny day and I did try videoing out there but it's too bright so I've come in here so the sun's sort of coming through the door at a funny angle so I hope that's um, I hope you can manage with that I'm also not sure if the video is doing some sort of bluey green thing today I'm not quite sure anyway we'll uh, see what it looks like later so anyway, as I say, today I thought I'd do a video about my hacking essentials. I hack out um, t a couple of times a week. Now we have a um, limited amount of exciting hacking around here and a lot of it is on the road. I'm really lucky because Basil is really good on the roads, really good with cars, lorries, tractors, trailers. Um, combine harvesters not quite so sure about um, and motorbikes he's good with a couple if sort of six or eight come by he gets a bit stressed before the end of the line go through but um, he's he's really good on the road so I'm really really lucky but there are things that I never leave the yard without and there are some things then that I use on um, some occasions and not on others so I thought I'd share with you with them today and um, maybe you would let me know what sort of things you always use when you're hacking out um, on the roads or wherever you hack out. So the first thing which I know um, and, and you're going to have to bear with me because hacking essentials you know a lot of them are about safety so anyway so the first thing obviously is your hard hat. Um, this one that I've got is relatively new I bought it I'm not going to take the cover off because it's impossible, it's really hard to get back on. But I bought it last summer. Um, it's got air vent holes in it, which is brilliant um, because in the summer I tend to get a really hot head, and I'm sure lots of people do. And it's got like a gappy bit here um, to try and keep your head cool as well. I did a uh, hat review actually on this hat, so I'll pop a link in the box below about that. So, hard hat, absolutely essential. Um, I actually never ever ride without a hat on. In the school, if I was hopping on for two minutes to ride down the down the field, I would put a hat on. I have heard too many horrifying stories about um, things that have happened to people without their hats on, even if they've just been on the horse for like one minute. They're big, strong, unpredictable animals, and that's why we love them, but you never know what's going to happen. And the other thing I always have when I'm hacking out um, now I didn't use to but in the last probably five years or so I, I always hack out summer or winter with my luminous hat cover on. Um, I, this is the second or third one I've had. Uh, they don't last very long and they get stained and dirty but this makes sure that people can see me from quite a long way away because even if the horse is low down, um, you know, hacking along they can see my head bobbing above the hedge which I think is really good. So I always wear my luminous hat cover when I'm hacking out as well. The other thing I absolutely always wear, summer, winter, spring, autumn, whatever, depend irrelevant of what I've got on underneath, if it's just a t-shirt in the summer, I always wear my luminous tabard. This one says, please pass wide and slowly. I've had a caution young horse one. I've had a variety over the years. Um, and again, like the luminous hat cover, um, I never ride without it um, when I'm hacking out. I think it, it uh, people, drivers, cyclists, people can pick you out against the hedge earlier than they would if you didn't have it on. And I just think giving them that extra, even if it's like an extra three seconds to slow down, it makes a huge difference. They can travel quite a long way in three seconds. Especially on the roads around me, which aren't 30 miles an hour, they're like 50 or national speed limit, which is 60 miles, about miles an hour, which is fast, it takes them a while to slow down. So any extra seconds you can give them to put their foot on the brakes before they get near you by wearing, making yourself seem quicker is better. So I always wear that whatever time of year it is, as I said. The other thing I always do um, now is um, ride with my mobile phone. I think the biggest problem with, with mobile phones when you're riding with them is where to put them. I mean, Basil um, is very good. Um, if he wasn't good, I would have my phone on silent 
whenever I rode because it's only there in an emergency if I if I fall off and lose the horse or whatever and I have to ring somebody so but he actually doesn't mind it ringing so actually I don't worry about that but in the winter I tend to put it in my coat pocket um, which may not be ideal I guess I zip it up so it's not going to fall out but if I fell on it maybe it would stick in my side or something I I do think about that sometimes and wonder but anyway in the summer when I haven't got a coat on or anything I use one of these mobile phone holders which is like a sport thing well I think they're designed to put around your arm but I put mine around my calf so that it doesn't um, interfere with my arms when I'm riding and obviously my legs still so that's what I do I put it around my just uh, just below my knee uh, when I'm riding and uh, you can get quite different size ones of these for different phones um, so that's what this one as you see it's an L Sport one but you can get loads of different makes of them and I bought picked this up in, in TK Maxx I think anyway so I always take my phone with me um, in case of emergencies but I don't pot it down the road chatting to my mates or anything like that um, it's just um, in case of emergencies the other thing I do, which is something I read about, um, I can't even remember where it was I read about it or when I read about it, but it was something to do with going to shows. And if you go to a show on your own, um, if you fall off and are not unconscious, nobody knows where to put your horse, which is your trailer or your horse box or anything to put your horse in. Um, so, I, so they suggested having sort of some sort of identification attached to the horse that said about your um, registration number and that sort of stuff. So I started doing this when I went to shows with um, a previous horse, so as I said, it's a few years ago, but actually decided it was a really, really, really good idea. So I've kept doing it and um, it's a luggage label and I attach it to the D-ring on the front of the saddle and on it I've got, so it's just like a normal luggage label that you put on um, your suitcase when you go on holiday but on it I have um, my name, the horse's name so this will double up if I was at a show on my own or or hacking out it's got my name, the horse's name, emergency telephone numbers I've got two of those on there it's got the registration number of, of the vehicle so that if they can find the trailer or the horse box at a show it's got um, the first line of my address and the vet's telephone number on here as well Now. Um, if I fall off on a hack and Basil gallops off, which he's done once, once, <laughs> only once have I fallen off on a hack, but he ran away. <laughs> um, horses in the past, if I've fallen off on, on when I've been out riding, stopped to eat, um, but he didn't. He ran off, and luckily I was well. I was in a big field, and he um, we were cantering, and he bucked me off, and there was no gate onto the lane so he went out on the lane. Anyway, somebody caught him, really luckily. But obviously, if he'd gone quite a long way and I couldn't walk, I could walk, it was a very long way across the field um, and I'd hurt my leg a little bit, but I could still walk, um, albeit slowly. So if, if he'd gone a long, long way, how would this person that caught my horse know where to take him? So having this attached to his saddle meant he, they didn't need it because I was I was there quite quickly after they caught him, but they would have had a phone number to ring to find out where this horse came from, so they could have taken him back. So I thought it's a fantastic idea. So fix a luggage label with a few details on it. Don't put your full address on because then someone's going to know where to go to steal your horse in the future if they want to or whatever you know. But um, put phone numbers on stuff so they can find contact somebody if they find your horse wandering around somewhere and you're not anywhere to be found. Attach it to the D-ring, brilliant. Such a good idea, so simple, so cheap. Then there's a couple of things that I just use really in the winter um, when it's dark and dingy or when there's really low light levels. And they're things that I put on Basil. He's got luminous boots. These um, I do use if I do use in the summer sometimes if it's really dark and dingy and if the light's not very good. Um, these just go around his front cannon bones um, and they're just, I think that because they've got like a reflective strip in the middle and then they're sort of luminous as well, it, as he's moving the cars uh, might pick his legs up 
Um, I have got back ones as well, but he's not very good with those. We're working on the back boots. Um, he's not very tolerant, so we're trying on that. Um, at the moment, he just wears the front ones. And the other thing I use only in the winter, really, because it'll get to basil way too hot in the summer or in the spring, um, is his luminous exercise sheet. Um, I've put pictures on, on Facebook and pictures um, on my blog and stuff of him. Um, and in fact, I've done a blog on high visibility gear. So this is in that. I'll link it in the box below. But he's got a um, big luminous exercise sheet. It's got reflective strips on it. I'm not sure how useful they are. I suppose they probably would be if you were really riding in the dark. But I don't, I don't ride in the dark. So... I've, I just find the rug, as as I said with my hat cover and the tabard, it just helps the driver see you that bit quicker, that bit earlier. The rug is a is a big luminous section um, that they are going to be able to see much more easily um, and pick out really quite quickly, sort of you know, much further down the road than they would if. Um, you were just on your horse. I mean, a grey horse is a different. Basil is bay. Brown, in the winter, he fades into the hedge. You know, you can't see him um, if the light's not very good. So, or if the lights, if the sun's low in cars' eyes, then they might not see you. So, I, if unless it's too hot, we wear that rug um, all the way through sort of the winter and the springtime, and make sure we're seen nice and early. Anyway, so that's my hacking essentials. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you have, please subscribe in the box below. And thanks for watching everyone, bye.